It was 62,000, kind of cheap, not gonna lie. It was a no-brainer, you know, I made like close to $4,000 for just a quick... <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Who in the what? As many of you guys know, I moved to Florida. Yes, I am not in Florida right now, clearly because Florida does not have this, but I am here just for the holidays. So come with me, let me tell you guys a story. But being back for the holidays kind of sucks for one reason, because I can't really do anything, meaning I can't buy a car, I can't buy anything because all my stuff is over there. I don't wanna buy anything here because I'm gonna have to transport over there. But there is a couple of interesting builds at Copart that I wanna check out and I wanna bring you guys with me so you guys can take a look at them and maybe I can provide some kind of value. I've been purchasing cars for the last maybe 10 years off Copart, so I kind of know a little bit about what to look for and what not to look for. So let's just enjoy the ride and have some fun. My brother gave me his A4 to use, which is all wheel drive because I don't have any cars here. So I'm kind of like, uh, you know, I'm kind of like without, without feet. And if you live in Washington, you have no car, you're literally like without feet. Like there's almost no other way of transportation unless you're like commuting locally. I don't know. But, oh man, I gotta wait for this to defrost. <laughs> it's kind of a little bit dangerous sport. But what I was trying to say is that today we're gonna have a very adventurous time at Copart because there's two cars that I'm kind of interested in, buy interested in buying. And if I do buy them, then I could probably sell them fast enough before I move because I'm like moving in 20 some days either that or take him with me to Florida being an adult kind of sucks because as a kid we would wish for this snow to fall and we would just be dreaming absolutely dreaming for the snow to fall but now it's only fun for a day or two and then you're like okay you know we got to get back to work got to get back to the grind so look at that it's kind of rare for us to have snow to be honest with you and for it to fall in November the end of November and early December is actually kind of surprising for Washington. So pat yourself on the back, Washington. <laughs> yeah. So we've arrived at Copart. We've got a buddy waiting for me already. Um, in five words, I want to explain how you can preview vehicles if you guys are interested in previewing vehicles wherever you guys are. I don't know how it is outside of the United States, but for the most part in the United States, I think it's all the same. $60 membership, which is five bucks a month, not bad at all. Um, with $60 membership you can, a year, so you can preview at any Copart location. I've been to multiple Copart locations with my same number member ID. And then you need a vest, which usually they sell them at the spot, but I would not bet on that because if they don't have them, you can't walk in. So just buy one at Walmart or have one with you. And then um, you scan the QR code in the front door, get in line. You'll get a text message saying that they're ready for you. Come to the front door, type in your member ID, sign, and then you can go preview the vehicles. So that's really simple, how to preview vehicles, how to purchase cars. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated. I can explain later on, but let's go right now inside. Yo, this Jetta though kind of sick, not gonna lie. I honestly wonder where it's made. Man, it's so cold out today. Anyways, we got a list of cars we gotta go through, so tag along. Look at this. Oh, it's frozen. That's solid. That's solid, bro. That's solid. Oh, look at that. Man, everything here is like frozen. But the first car we have on the list is this 2004 Audi TT with a buy it now of 1650. Claims to have a clean title right there. Claims to be a run and drive. And um, yeah, it looks kind of good. So it's right here. Let's check it out. It's a little bit riced out. Um, by a little bit, I mean a lot, you know, turbo sport, but kind of sucks that we have all this frost because I can't really tell if there's damage or not. It did show in the Copar pictures that there's some kind of scuffs right here. Can't tell anything due to the um, freezing temperatures, but look at that little Tron look, you know, <laughs> I don't really like these cars at all, but I think the price is what, what kind of attracts me because this is like a six, seven thousand thousand dollar car i guess at this kind of mileage <clears throat> and if it's a run and drive everything good clean title 
Oh, right here's the damage, not in the back. So you can see a little bit of scuffs, which is not bad. And then you have this broken piece here, fresh tires like new, but um, definitely riced out. I don't like that at all. But as, as I was saying is for $1,650 after fees, you'll probably pay around $2,100, 2200 And at that price, if it's something minor, you can probably make a couple of grand on this car. So that's why I was like kind of interested something like this you can just buy and flip it for cheap and still make money we have a fog light cover missing here something popped out something funky going on cracked right here bumper seems like this bumper was replaced or something gaps don't look the most amazing on the bumper so something definitely going on with the front not totally sure what the heck it is but claims to have a clean title so Let's go inside and see if it starts up. This vehicle here is not a insurance seller. Um, and you can tell by this label here. So claim, loss type unknown, Pe Pedal LLC is selling it. So that's not, I don't think that's an insurance company, but step inside, 70,000 miles. So uh, ignition's on, so the battery's good. That's good, we would have to wait for anyone to jump it. We got the book, book here. Interior is pretty dirty, but looks about 70,000 miles. I'm sure once it gets cleaned up, it'll be great. Look, oh my gosh, who would do all this? This is just so ugly. <laughs> this car in general is ugly. I don't, I don't like it. I, I honestly do not like it. Oh my gosh, the ceiling. What the heck? What is that? The starlight, starlight ceiling. Um, let's see if it fires up. We got power to the ignition. Look at that. Ooh, 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 ooh. She runs. Yeah, she runs. I mean, sounds good. What do we got? Check engine light. Look at that low cooling. I'm assuming. Kind of blurred out can't really tell what's going on i think the the pixels are going out on it but and then something with the top but for the most part it runs heated seats another thing that sucks is it's automatic uh, i did notice that the manual ones are a little bit more expensive specifically on this one and the reason why i'm looking at this car with kind of you know with interest is because my um my bmw 328i i purchased it was a buy it now for two thousand dollars i bought it and i made a bunch of money when i sold it and it was super easy fix thermostat so it was like it was a no-brainer you know i made like close to four thousand dollars for just a quick i don't know <laughs> anyways i don't want to brag about that i'm happy about that but this is kind of the things i look for um on my free time because why not right why not look at this I mean, for the most part, it looks clean. It looks pretty good. I can't really say. What the heck is that? What in the world is this? Oh, that. Oh, okay. Let's see if I press that. Oh, press that. Unhook that. It's frozen. Everything is frozen. I can't really take any of this. Oh, whoa. Yo. <laughs> Okay, so I'm a little bit scared of that. I'm a little bit scared of the low coolant. So we're gonna shut this off. It runs good. I don't mean to rev a cold engine, but you don't got much time and you gotta test it out before you buy it, right? So I'm gonna kill that. See what this thing looks like with the top down. <laughs> what the heck is this thing? <laughs> Look at this thing. <laughs> I don't know, it's funny. These things are ugly. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> well, it's at $1,650 right now. Uh, current bid is $850. I'll probably play it to about $1,000 um, simply because um, I don't really want to risk more, to be honest with you. We still got to look under the, under the hood. I'm going to start this back up and close the top because, yeah.
Oh, well, that light went away, so I guess only thing left is a check engine. closed it's freezing and I mean freezing open that I hate non-insurance sellers um, because you know you really don't know what the heck it can be with the car and that's the number one reason why I like to purchase and stick with insurance because who knows? Look at this. This is loose. Take that off. We got no coolant. So obviously that light was on because of no coolant, which leads me to think, why is there no coolant? Do we have a coolant leak? Is it as simple as that? Or could it be a bad, bad head gasket? What can it be, you know? Another thing is you can tell that all of this stuff is kind of like cleaned up and oiled up and then you got zip ties here and there. Everything's just loose. Something funky going on here. Uh, I don't know. Maybe if I was staying in Seattle longer, I would be interested in paying more for it, but I just don't want, I don't want to buy it and then, and then have a problem, you know? Just like not being able to sell it, not being, not needing to ship it, nothing. It's just kind of like, yeah. Anyways, that's my five cents of this car. We have a couple more cars to check out. This is just one of the ones I wanted to buy per simply because I can make money on it. Um, but I think I'm gonna pass unless it goes for dumb cheap. So yeah. Well, the next car we have here is gonna be a 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E Premium, which everybody says this car is trash. And um, I kind of want to see it for myself. It's currently at 17,000. Two hours and 28 minutes is playing and it's on minimum bid. So we don't know what the minimum bid is. But it's right here, and let's make a little judgment of it for ourselves. Um, let's first actually look at the vehicle, not the damage, and see if I like the car in general. You know what's cool working at an insurance shop? I kind of know what all these things, you know, like all these signs and this, and well, I guess not that, but I guess it's a progressive. Is it progressive? No, Liberty Mutual Insurance, so that's a good sign. We have an insurance seller, which is great. Uh, to be honest with you guys, I only purchased maybe out of a hundred cars I've bought on auction, let's just say that's the number, I've probably purchased one or two vehicles that are not insurance sellers. And the only reason I purchased them is because I actually went in person, looked at the vehicle, started it, did my thing, and was confident enough to buy. Um, and one of the two was a donated vehicle. So yeah, that's kind of uh, my judgment on that. What the heck? I didn't even realize I just pressed that. Look at that. I didn't even realize this is a button until it, cause it was kind of melted. So I just kind of pressed it, but that's the button to open the door. What in the world? It has this kind of handle just kind of out of the bell molding. <laughs> okay, that's weird. The rear doesn't have it, but it has a button. So, oh, this door is already open. So let's see. Ah, gosh, I can't even open it. Oh, there it goes, okay. Oh, what in the world just happened there? Okay. Like push the door out or something. Let's see. Okay, anyways. I don't know how that works. Kind of stupid in my opinion. But. Okay, we got the door open. And uh, first impression, we got a very, very simple interior. Kind of all electric cars do. Here's the opening door from the inside, unless there's a button somewhere, I don't know. But um, yeah, stereo looks pretty sick. Seats are super simple. Don't know if there's anything special to it, but let's hop inside. Let's take a closer look. We got a little screen here. I like that. My Tesla Model 3 doesn't have that. I like this because you can see a speedometer, but you do get used to this, so it's not bad. So you can fire it up. Let up, vehicle is on. Boom, boom, ka -chow. Guys, it is freezing. My hands are. Oh, Joe Nixon. Hardcore country. 
country. Chill out, whatever that was. Sucks that this thing has a bunch of parts in the back, so I can't really take a look at that. Um, but it does have a panel roof, which is pretty sick. Um, for the most part, the car is kind of cool. I mean, it's very simple and very minimalistic, and that's kind of what Tesla, all the electric vehicles are going for, which I fully understand. I like that to an extent. I do also like my muscle cars and, you know, V8 and all the electronics and all the technology. And I like everything, you know, I'm an enthusiast, so I like everything, but I can understand why they're going towards this, making it simple, user-friendly, la la la. Anyways, let's see what we got over here. I'm not gonna dabble too much with this, but I wanna see how like responsive it is, how, I mean, it doesn't seem bad. Heated steering wheel, let's see. Let's go here, drive modes, whisper, camera. Doesn't seem too slow, it doesn't seem horrible. I know someone was telling me that the Volkswagen one is just absolutely horrible. This one doesn't seem bad. I can't really drive the vehicle or anything, but anyways, interior is cool. I, I, I can I can admire why and what it is. Sure, some people can say it's dumb and too plain. Seats are too plain. I think a little bit more in the seats would be cool, but it's whatever. Let's go check out that exterior. Check out the damage and roughly see how much this car will go for. I've never played one of these. I don't know what they're worth, so I don't really know what it's gonna sell for. But look at that. It's got nothing up here, so. <laughs> and then for the most part the frame looks actually really straight it looks perfect just right here some damage uh, which looks like it's on bolts and you can unbolt that front clip or front rebar and change that so that looks really simple uh, besides that hood fender what we got fender is good a little bit of damage here repair so that's good aluminum fender I'm assuming uh, let's see okay yeah yeah Kind of looks interesting. It looks low key though, like very low key. It looks cool. Like I can kind of see this be like an off-road buggy. Like you guys see what I'm saying or no? <laughs> um, this I can't. I can't do that. That's kind of stupid. <laughs> Anyways, the damage does not look bad whatsoever. And I guess once this thing sells, I will show you guys what it will sell for. Counting all this damage. Who in the what? what? Do you do you see what I'm seeing? It looks like a pimple. I don't want to cut myself, but yeah, I don't know what that is. Let's see the last part of the trunk. What's inside here? That camera? How, how do you how do you open this thing? Hello, anybody home? There it is. Oh yeah, it's got stuff for parts. Headlights. RNI, remove and install, so headlight is good. That headlight is not good. So usually if it says r and I, it's remove and install. r and r means re remove and replace. Let's see if that'll close on its own, I'm hoping. Let's see, it's gonna be like beep beep, open back up, nope. So that's that. I kind of like it, not gonna lie. I mean, it might be like horrible performance and everything else, but the look is kind of cool, it's kind of unique and Whatever, it's awesome, you know. It has some wheels I just noticed. I thought these were stock, but they're Nietzsche or Nietzsche, how you want to say it. Look, curved up. But it is what it is. Let's go on to the next car because we got a couple more cars to look at. Copart expanded their um, yard by like double the size. So now you have to walk, I don't know, it feels like a mile just to get to one edge. Look at this. It's absolutely massive. This was another car I looked at, but we're not gonna spend too much time on it. 2020 BMW 330xi. I really wanted a 340 for the longest time before I got my G80 M3, but it's at 51 already, kind of steep plus minus. I mean, the damage is not bad, but it's past what I wanna pay for it. So we're not gonna spend much time, but let's just take a look at it. It's right over here. And once again, I apologize for the frost. I can't really do anything about that. It kind of sucks because we can't really inspect the vehicle the way we want it to, but it is what it is. Looking at the front, we got minor damage. I love when insurance companies do this and put bolts in baggies and if they label them or put them where they should be, that's just, thank you whoever did that. 
Um, another thing is this front end damage is really, really light, super easy. That rebar just changed that piece out and then assembled the entire front end. It doesn't look like the hood and fenders even got touched. The gaps look good. You know, the caps look perfect here and there. But probably, yeah, the hood locks, everything's good. Um, check out the interior. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? I love when they put baggies of bolts, but I hate when Copart or insurance companies do this, especially to nice cars like this. Um, <laughs> let's see, it has some rear end damage too, so um, that's the exhaust right there, which means that this thing should sound a little bit interesting, not like a stock vehicle. I hate to do it, but I'm gonna rev it on a cold engine. Ah, not bad. Anyway, she runs. And a car like this, um, with this kind of damage is kind of what I like because they're super easy and quick fixes. You don't need a frame machine. You don't really need anything. Just a couple of parts, couple of this paint and put it together. This is like an entry level rebuild and someone that doesn't know too much about framework or vehicles. This is the kind of car I would recommend to buy because you know, you have some damage here. Like you got, look at this. You have some damage here on the trunk, right? Like replace this trunk, play with this a little bit. You know, none of this really looks damaged. There's supposed to be a bracket here where the bumper slides onto. It's got a ton of parts here. There's bolts and, you know, this is kind of like an entry level rebuild where it's gonna be fun, easy and rewarding. But then again, this car will sell for a lot because of how easy of a rebuild it is. Um, next car we're gonna look at is actually right there. It's a 2016 or 14 Audi A7. And I kind of want that as a daily, um, probably not the best daily in Florida because we don't really need the Quattro there, but, for here is great if I can buy it and fix it uh, quickly, then I could flip it. But don't really think I have time for that. So let's just let's just see it. You know, I like these Audi A7s because um, they're just kind of big, nice cars. I, I I hated the rear end for the absolute longest time. I really really hated this right here. This like I don't know what you want. Seems like somebody stepped on the back. You know, but then after I saw an RS7, I was like, oh. You know, it's really not that bad. Um, and now I kind of like him. So <laughs> that's kind of the, the story of how I began liking them. The reason why this one attracted me is because of not much damage, but looking at it now, it's got more damage than um, I would want. So probably not too interested, but we can still take a look at it. Let's see, aluminum hood. These hoods are extremely expensive. I think they're like about 18 to $2,000 for this hood because they fit Audi A7, S7, and RS7. They're the same hoods. Do not facts check me. I am about 95% sure, but I may, may, may be wrong. Aluminum fender, aluminum hood, headlights really expensive as well. Actually, headlights fair price. Bumper is decent. RS7 bumper is expensive. S7 and A7 is decent price. 3.0 supercharged engine. This is a great motor right here. And damage-wise, it doesn't really look bad. We have an oil cooler here that's bad. And then we have fender, headlight, bumper, um, frame for the most part looks good suspension maybe this wheel is turned in a little bit and this one here is straight yeah so we have some suspension damage doesn't look bad but national general insurance guys always look for this this is crucial you just, dude there's plenty of bad people out here and uh yeah we got some airbags blown I love Audi's interiors, especially in years like this. I think this is 2014. 2012, what in the world? 2012. What the heck happened here? <laughs> what is going on here? We're not gonna ask questions. Let's fire this up. Nope, she is completely dead. So we got these locked up and what sucks about Audi's Worst part about Audis, rebuilding them. When the front seatbelts go bad, the rear ones lock up. Watch this. I didn't even check them yet. Look at that. Locked. Right there and locked right there. And to rebuild those seatbelts, oh my gosh. Replace, rebuild, whatever. You're tearing apart half the car back there. It's a pain in the butt. Anyways, on to the next. So walking to my next car, I actually came across this 2021 BMW M2 competition and I've wanted a comp so bad for the longest time. This one here is not for sale yet. So technically we can't look at it, but it's kind of 
between all the other cars so we're gonna look at it and whoever wants to play in the future that might see this video well now you have a better visual of it so let's take a look at it man it's so beautiful i love this color just oh my hands are froze i can't even move them anyways that uni grill touching i love it it's so sick let's see what kind of headlights it has yep hexagon ones not the circle ones super aggressive bumper down here is cracked it looks like it flew into some sort of a ditch or something their wheels have wheels have um you know dirt on them calipers have dirt on them so it definitely flew into some kind of a ditch or something i'm not sure yet exactly what it is uh let's see let's see let's see what it is oh this one look at this one yeah that's oh man <laughs> look at that thing all right let's see if we can get some undercarriage shot for you don't know if you can tell anything but i love the aggressiveness of this vehicle and then it has a black roof i'm not sure if that's wrapped or painted because i don't think they have a carbon roof only the m2 cs has a carbon roof interior oh it's a manual look at that carbon interior um, I'm not sure if these are the same seats as a regular M2 or different. I'm honestly not sure. I, I forgot what my M2 seats are. Seat belt is locked up, but for the most part, no bags are blown. Oh, that one is curtain right there. Passenger curtain is blown. M2 competition. See if it will fire up. No? It's not letting me fire up. Yeah, I got my clutch pulled in. Oh wow, that feels so tight, nice. Dude, I love that, that feels great. Oh, it's not gonna start up because the restraint system, the freaking seat belt or the airbag system. But, nice and clean inside. How much miles? How many miles? 26,000, pretty decent. Harman Kardon, great speaker system. And now let's go see the actual damage. Rear end exhaust has moved over a little bit. See the frame. Ah, oh, there she is. That <laughs> ka-chow. I'm telling you, this is a real ka-chow. Interesting because the quarter panel for the most part looks like it survived. And the gaps here for the most part look decent, you know. Um, but yeah, this is um, a pretty decent rebuild. You got to pull all this out replace that box measure these rear frame make sure everything's centered out and then from there you can continue rebuilding but interesting interesting because that quarter panel looks really good it almost i almost kind of like this because it almost seems like you don't have to like you don't have to cut the quarter panel you don't really have to do anything this kind of seems really aggressive i feel like if you pull all that out properly, you may be able to get away with getting that fixed without even telling anything, without even painting. But yeah, that's kind of that. And suspension for the most part looks good too. A little walk around, last one. Yeah, I guess a vehicle like this, the price, price depends on everything, you know? So if the price is cheap, price is right, then then it's good. It doesn't look like it has any kind of damage to the motor or anything. It should fire right up. And then the main special thing about these M2 competitions is that they have the S55 in here. So this is the M3, M4 motor from the F80, F82. Absolute beast. A motor like this in such a lightweight car, whew, yeah, that's <laughs> can be a very dangerous uh, combination. But it's interesting because I had an M2 and I had the N55, and the N55 and the M2 was a little bit stronger than the N55 in the 435 or 335, and it pushed plenty of power for a little car like this. I can't imagine how much power this beast has. And then last thing is the rear end. Open this up. We have a window sticker here. It was 62,000, kind of cheap, not gonna lie. I thought it was gonna be more, but that sounds actually priced very fair. Um, yeah, we have some damage back here, so 
I don't know if you don't know how what to how to work with frame then I would not recommend this car but it seems like this frame rail went up and it does need to get pulled down so so I was gonna look at this power wagon right here uh, but right by this power wagon was this power Hummer you can say so um, Instead of looking at this power wagon, we're going to look at this power Hummer. Unfortunately, it is not for sale yet either. But if anyone in the future wants to play this vehicle, I guess you guys will have a better view of it. So that's the lot number right there. You guys can copy it and let's start this tour. I've never seen an H2 Hummer up close like this. So it's going to be kind of an interesting first impression for myself as well. It's, it's honestly massive. The car is massive. It's pretty cool looking. <laughs> it's like a box but um the front end is huge windshield is massive just realized that the hood is huge doesn't look like there's any kind of really serious damage it's got this but <laughs> look at these wheels these are like what 24s yep 24s <laughs> 24s h2 hummer doesn't look like anything serious up front once again it doesn't i don't i don't know why they totaled it but Unless there's something in the back. I haven't looked at this car. It's my first time seeing it, so. Man, it's kinda, ooh. Ooh, ooh. It's kinda sketchy out here. Nothing, no, oh my gosh. Nothing going on back here either. Seems pretty straightforward for the most part. Kinda ugly in the back, but. Let's see if we can. Get it cranked open. Oh wow, it was all chrome down the front. It's got a bunch of parts inside. <sighs> Smells fresh. Doesn't smell bad. Mm-hmm. It's got a bunch of room inside too. A little bigger than I thought. Let's see what we got here. No airbags or anything like that blown on the inside. Don't even know if this thing has airbags. But that build quality is kind of trash. I'm not sure they like they glued that back together. And then I saw something here, right here. Paint. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These seats are like so big, but stubby. Yep, no power. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of weird. I guess it's to each person's um, likings. I don't like it at all. Don't start, it's dead. But it's got Bose, you know, we got Bose sound system, that's good. But I guess, you know, people buy cars like this for different reasons, so I don't, I don't, I wouldn't want it. I would want it because the exterior looks unique, cool, interesting, but I wouldn't want it because it's like, I can't, I can't imagine it being comfy or, or anything else. Um, probably not for that, it's not, it's not built for that purpose either, but. Next one we have on the list is this 2019 BMW 850xi with the solid kachow in the front. Current buy now is 26,150, and it's right here. Let's take a look at it. First impression is it's huge and like aggressively aggressive in the rear, and I actually really like it. It almost looks like a Corvette. It's interesting. I don't know why I said that, but I feel like it's because the the chrome wheels, the wide tires. And then just this C8 rear end looking like thing. Carbon diffuser. And this wrapped, it used to be blue before. So it's got like that blue color before. You can see a little inlay there. So yeah, look at this thing. All stelted out in the back, blacked out. Go look at the shift knob. The shift knob? Is it the, is it the glass one? I've never seen the glass shift knob in my life. So let's hop inside. Don't like this interior color, but to each their own. Windshield is busted. Airbags are gone here, here. Shift lights on the steering wheel. So this guy has some money in this car. That's for sure. Nice steering wheel. Wow, I like it. Yo, that shift knob is actually really freaking unique and cool. It's got like a Halo 8 inside. I don't know, I can't, not haloing inside this. See if you can, oh, there it is. I like that and it has the start button the same so oh man a bunch of stuff in here look at this ton of leg room honestly like you can probably fit i don't know full grown 
uh, six foot seven, six foot seven foot male in here, you know. <laughs> See if it will give me any juice to the, nope. It doesn't feel like an A series because of how unspacious it is inside, but it does feel like a luxury coupe. So if that makes any sense. Um, don't know what to look at here. Let's take a look at the front end. Doesn't seem like it has any damage anywhere. It's a lot shorter than, I, than, it, than it looks. I mean, it's like to my, you know, over there. Carbon mirrors. And uh, yeah, that front don't look too good. <laughs> I don't even know where to start with that front damage. Let's see what we got here. Oh, it's got lasers on it. You know? <laughs> lasers? Yeah. Do you know lasers? Yeah. It's definitely tuned, Project Gala, intakes. This headlight's murdered out as well. Lasers, yep. Man, it's a pretty decent, pretty extensive repair up front. Not a project I'd want to tackle at this moment. Obviously doable, but not something I'm interested in. Dang, dude. I hope the person that was in this car is all right, because that's not, man, it just, a lot of times we look at these cars and we don't really realize that there was actually people inside this while the accident happened so we just look at it just like i guess we have to look at it like that because if we look at it with like a point of feeling bad every single time then copart wouldn't exist so we kind of have to realize that it's just kind of a vehicle and pray and hope that the person inside is always okay because yeah i don't know i just hope that because i've never been in an accident like that and i never want to i don't hope anyone does but that's scary you know something like that but yeah <laughs> what do you got there this, is, this right here is United States versus Florida. <laughs> <laughs> so our last car on the list is this one here. It's a 2019 Mercedes-Benz E53 AMG. I'm not sure if you can see that too well, but the reason why I picked this one is because it has kind of minor damage, not much to it. And first and second of all, it's a beautiful car. And third of all, this vehicle specifically is on approval. Usually when a car is on approval, usually, it's seller, uh, private seller. Basically a person doesn't want the car to go for cheap so they put it on approval or minimum bid. And then another thing is kind of sketchy because it has a Texas title. So this thing came from Texas. Why is it here in Washington and what is going on with it? Here it is, it's gorgeous. It looks stunning. I actually love this car a lot. But um, we're gonna do a quick browse. Has no damage, I love the color. Everything about it is so perfect. I actually really, really like this car. Uh, I think it's on bags. Not 100% sure, but it's currently aired out, so that's why it's sitting so low. And then we have some kind of funny um, oil cooler back here, what it looks like, coolant or oil. That looks like coolant. I don't think oil would be like that. Interesting. I have no idea why that's here. Interesting. Interior is in great shape. He's looking if it's on bags. Is it on bags or no? No, not in bag? No. Are you sure? Pretty sure. How were you? Are you? Let's see if my camera can see, no? Go. Try to capture it. Hang on, let me see. No, let me see. Let me see. If I can go here to see anything. I'm not sure. Is it on springs? Or coils? I can't or something? tell. I just see the the shock absorber right there. But... Yeah, well the bag is gonna be separate from the shock yeah, absorber. Kind of so it's so it's gonna be so like... let's see, I have a little it's on bags, yo. Is it? Yeah, I can see it, right? Bag right there. I don't see it. Yes, yeah, right there, the bag. Anyways. It's, it's way too low. Yeah, it. it's way too low. It's, it's currently aired out, and when a Mercedes gets um, some kind of damage and electricity goes out, it doesn't hold, hold the compressor, doesn't hold. The bags don't hold the air, and there's no power to the compressor. They usually go like this. So it's kind of a sketchy sign. Not always. Could be fine. Could be started up, and then it'll pump back up. It'll be totally fine. Going to the front, we don't have much damage here, nothing scary. I mean, what, we have a buckle right here, okay, big deal, you know. He can probably tuck that in, can't even see anything. PDR that a little bit, he'll be totally fine. PDR that, he'll be fine. Front bumper needs to be painted. Hmm, I think so, I'm not even sure. Looks like, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can get away with not even touching or painting anything here, it'll be totally fine. But, uh, it's beautiful and it's sketchy. Let's go ahead and take a look here. Look at this. Lost type, unknown, pickup date, unknown, claim, okay? 
and then non-insurance seller nothing it shows nothing so be very 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 careful guys there's bad people out in this world and if it's not an insurance seller chances are it's somebody selling their car because they can't sell it on the marketplace odometer 17,000 miles going on into the interior and oh my gosh why why <laughs> someone had road roid roy rage or road rage either one of them uh, let's see let's see yeah we got no power to anything so man, I, I love to see the compressor setup in the back you know <laughs> the yeah the compressor setup should be actually in the trunk but I love this huge screen Interior is beautiful. I like the Mercedes interior. I just don't like one thing about this, but E63s and E53s, they're seats. I don't like these seats. The bucket seats are just stunning because they have, E63 has bucket seats, some of them. They're so sick, but these, ah, they kind of, they're too plain. Man, this guy's already taken apart half the car. <laughs> but yeah, it's sick. It's sick. Be careful out there. <laughs> That's my advice. Just be careful. We're freezing, so we're going to get back into the car once I get warmed up. Um, I'll tell you guys a little more stuff, but thank you guys for staying with me and then hope you guys enjoy there's enjoy the Copart walk around this time specifically there were so many cars on Copart uh, maybe because they extended a lot but there were so many interesting things to look at so if this video is a little bit too long you guys can skip through it all right guys I just came home warmed up my hands because they were absolutely freezing um, I did mention earlier in the video about purchasing car purchasing cars in Copart a little bit different than just viewing them I purchased through a private Licensed broker so you guys can find a licensed broker that um, has access to Copart and can purchase cars That only dealers can so that's the big benefit and then there's like different benefits where it's like cheaper fees And you guys have to find out specifically with your guys broker but that's that. Besides that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know I can't do any kind of rebuilds for those guys commenting saying, oh, get back to rebuilding. I can't because I'm not at home. Technically, I'm not at home. Uh, so that's the case there. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, drop a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys later.